Ah, ah, ah. Now I know what you're thinking. Did he fire 33 shots or only 30? To be quite honest with you, in all this excitement, I've forgotten myself. But this being the KWA M93R, it can pump three rounds into your chest in under a second. So you gotta ask yourself the question, do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Do you? What's going on, Airsofters? My name's Matt, and recently we made a video that became very popular talking all about everything you need to know about purchasing your very first airsoft gun. Now, in that video, I focused only on the primary weapons, so a lot of you guys were messaging me asking me things like, well, uh, what about sidearms or what about pistols? So I figured, you know, why not make a complete guide from start to finish on how to go about purchasing, you know, your very first airsoft pistol. Just like in our first beginner gun video, we will first be talking about where and how to purchase your very first airsoft gun. Next, we will be discussing and explaining all the weird terminology and acronyms surrounding airsoft pistols so that we are all on the same page, as well as exploring all the different types of pistols you have available to you. Then we'll talk about some things and information to consider about your pistol before you make your purchase. And then finally, I'll give you guys some of my personal recommendations for gun models and brands to look at, and then tell you guys what I think, in my personal opinion, is the best beginner airsoft pistol. To make things more convenient for you guys, I'm going to divide this video into chapters, much like in our very first beginner gun video. This way we can all have an organized arrangement of information, and it'll allow you guys to jump ahead to specific parts of the video that you're interested in in case, you know, you choose to do so. I'll leave chapter shortcut links in the video description below for your convenience. I hope you guys find the video useful, and if you have any questions regarding purchasing your very first airsoft pistol, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, and I will try to get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. Alright guys, let's get started. Here we go. Firstly, let's talk about where you can go to purchase your very first airsoft pistol. Essentially, you have two options available to you, them being going to an airsoft walk-in store or purchasing your pistol from an online website. Out of these two options, I would personally recommend you going to a walk-in store if you are able to. The reason for this is when you go to a walk-in store, you can browse and examine all the different options that you have available to you in person, and even potentially handle different pistols for yourself. This way, you will be able to find the one that you like the best. Now, if you don't know where to find an airsoft walk-in store that is in your area, I would recommend checking out this website called airsoftc3.com. This website is really helpful for beginners and advanced players alike because it will list all known airsoft teams, stores, and fields state by state, making it extremely easy for anyone to find what they're looking for in a very short period of time. Now currently, Airsoft C3 only has a map of locations for the US. So for our European followers, I will leave some links in the description down below to similar websites that can assist you in a similar manner. Now, if by chance you don't have a walk-in store that is anywhere near you, fear not because there are a ton of online airsoft websites that you can order from. One major advantage that online stores will have over walk-in stores is that generally speaking, they will have a larger inventory and thus they will have more pistol options available for you. Now, with that being said, there are tons of different online websites for you to choose from. So you can browse around for yourself online and find one that you like the best. Personally, we would recommend checking out websites such as airsoftgi.com, evic.com, and Airsoft Megastore. Everyone on our team orders slash has ordered products from these websites before, and we've had very good experiences with each of them, so we would highly recommend checking those out. Next up, let's go over some of the weird airsoft terminology and talk about the different types of pistols that you have available to you. Essentially, there are three main types of pistols for you to choose from. Starting off at the lower end of the totem pole, let's talk about spring pistols, or as some people like to refer to them as springers. How these guns work is pretty basic. When a loaded mag is inserted, you rack the slide in order to chamber a round. Simultaneously, this will cock an internal spring, and when the trigger is pulled, the spring is released, this will push forward on a piston, and this will create air pressure, thus will push a BB out the end of the barrel and presumably towards your target. Now unfortunately, once you've fired, you then have to repeat the process all over again and again and again to shoot simultaneous rounds. These types of guns are commonly found in places like Walmart, 
and uh, generally speaking they are extremely cheap and don't shoot very far or accurately for that matter. In addition to this they are usually made of pretty cheap plastic and uh, like this one I'm holding here it has been broken beyond repair just from me accidentally dropping it on the floor. Uh, so there's definitely fun to be had from spring pistols. However, outside of playing small backyard skirmishes with your friends or messing around, you know, in the backyard, I really wouldn't recommend these things for, you know, competitive gameplay or playing at fields. Next up, we have the Automatic Electric Pistol, or AEP. As the name implies, these guns are powered by batteries to operate the action of the gun instead of you having to manually cycle the action of the gun for each shot. A lot like spring pistols, these guns are generally very cheap and not very good quality. However, what's cool about these pistols is that you can get semi-automatic firing capabilities because of the battery-operated action. This means you don't have to cock the gun between each shot. The gun kind of does it for you. I personally still wouldn't really recommend these for competitive games you'll go to, but they are definitely a step up from spring-powered pistols. And last, but certainly not least, we have, in my opinion, the coolest type of airsoft pistol. Gas powered. <laughs> These pistols are powered either by green gas or red gas, which is much more commonly referred to as CO2. So, starting off with green gas. Ah, this stuff is essentially odorless propane with silicone oil mixed inside. How it works is you take your gas pistol mag, turn it upside down, Index the, I guess you can call that thing, I don't know, maybe a nozzle. And then there's a little hole. I don't know if you guys can see that right there on the bottom of the magazine. Let's focus back on my face, please. There we go. You're going to index your nozzle with that little hole in the bottom of your magazine. You're going to press down and hold for a time between four to six seconds, but I generally try to hold it for about five, you know, somewhere around that time and you're good to go. You release it. This is empty, so it has, doesn't have anything in it, but you know, just use for visual aid. But once your magazine is full, you now have a fully charged pistol magazine. Now, depending on the brand of gun you get and the quality of the gas you use, you can generally get between one and a half, you know, maybe two mags on one full fill. The alternate to green gas is propane, which is essentially the exact same thing, but you can get it at almost any sporting goods store. And, you know, it's actually far cheaper than green gas. However, it does lack the built-in silicone in it in order to help lubricate your gun. And <laughs> to be honest, this stuff smells really, really bad because they put in a specific scent to it in case there's ever a gas leak with propane. You can smell it in the air and it alerts you to its presence. The only other downsides to propane are that you'll have to buy an adapter like this one I have installed on here currently in order to fill your magazines. And in some cases, uh, putting propane into your gas-powered pistol can potentially void your warranty with the pistol manufacturer. But either way, you have options. Just as a little side note, please be aware that both these guys are very flammable, so do not fill these things anywhere near an open flame. The other option is red gas or CO2. What's cool about these guys is that they already come pre-packaged in these little capsules that you can just insert into your pistol mag tighten a screw at the bottom, and bam, you're ready to go. I personally prefer CO2 over green gas because one cartridge will last you potentially three to five mags or so in my personal experience. And in addition to that, CO2 powered guns will perform much better in colder climates in comparison to green gas. The only major downside to CO2 is that uh, the capsules can get a little expensive over a period of time, but considering how long they last per mag, I really think it's a pretty good trade-off. So those are the two most common ways of powering a gas gun. Now, how does it actually work? For gas blowback guns, or GBB, we insert a fully loaded magazine into the gun with the gas already inside. Then we rack the slide, and there you go. We're already hot and ready to go. And let me tell you something, racking that slide never gets old. <laughs> now, when you pull the trigger on the gun, the pistol's mechanism will actually release gas from the magazine and that gas will automatically cycle the action of the gun. What this gives you is semi-automatic firing capability with a recoiling slide that simulates a real firearm. Now, there are two kinds of gas-powered pistols. We have blowback pistols, like this one right here, and we also have non-blowback. The difference between the two is, well, one has a recoiling slide and uh, the other does not. However, fundamentally, they operate on the same principles. These guns are, generally speaking, very durable, reliable, accurate, and obviously, extremely fun to shoot. 
The only major downside to these guns is the fact that they need to be more maintained and more upkept in order to function properly. And these are also probably the more expensive type of pistols as well. However, it's worth noting that good quality GBBs can actually be obtained for around a low price of $70, so they are still very affordable. But regardless, it's for these reasons why I would personally recommend going the route of a GBB for a solid beginner pistol that'll be able to hold its ground in competitive airsoft games. Alright, so now that we're all caught up on our terminology and have an idea of all the different types of pistols that you have available to you, let's talk about some qualities and things to consider when purchasing your very first airsoft pistol. Firstly, let's talk about actually powering your pistol. To shoot any type of airsoft gun, you are most definitely going to need BBs. In the case of airsoft pistols, I would recommend going with 0.20 or 0.25 gram BBs. Realistically, anything heavier than that will potentially take away from the overall range of your pistol because it won't be strong enough to throw those heavier rounds farther out. Also, please be sure not to use 0.12 gram rounds because uh, these weight BBs are known to break apart when fired and fragments can potentially get jammed into the action of your gun and seize it up or even potentially break it. Now, if you do go the route of a gas gun, you will either need to purchase CO2 or green gas as previously mentioned. Both green gas and CO2 can most likely be purchased from the same store that you got your pistol from. But on the off chance that the website doesn't have those things available, you can actually obtain CO2 cartridges from most sporting goods stores or even Walmart for that matter. In addition to that, propane can also be obtained from these stores as well. But you will need to make sure you get an adapter like this one right here from an online airsoft website. But with that out of the way, let's move on to our next talking point, the price of your pistol. Now, considering the fact that the purpose of a pistol in the first place, that's a tongue twister right there for you, is to mostly be a backup for your primary. Odds are you won't be drawing it on an opponent all that often, unless you are deliberately making the decision to choose it over your primary weapon to make an engagement. So with that in mind, I would recommend not spending an insane amount of money on your very first airsoft pistol. Nor, in fact, would I recommend going with a really cheap airsoft pistol either. The reason for this is if you spend too much money on your pistol and don't end up liking it, you just burn a ton of your hard-earned money and you aren't even really happy with your purchase. On the flip side of that coin, if you get a really cheap pistol, it can actually potentially break down on you when you really need it the most. A good range to shoot for, in my mind, is somewhere between $70 and $150. However, depending on your monetary situation, you can adjust that number accordingly. The advantage of getting a moderately good gun is 1. You save money that you could potentially put towards other parts of your loadout. 2. You'll have a pretty decent and reliable handgun. And 3. If and when you are ready to upgrade your pistol, you'll have an idea of what you want in your new pistol based upon what you experienced from your first one. One quick thing I want to quickly address is FPS, which stands for feet per second. Here in the United States, this is the standard which we use to measure how hard a gun shoots. Now, for most fields and arenas here in the U.S., 400 feet per second is the accepted limit for rifles and carbines. Anything above that limit is generally reserved for sniper rifles or light machine guns, and they have very restricted limits on how close they can engage somebody. So, make sure your pistol shoots underneath that limit, because if it doesn't, it's not going to be allowed where you are playing, or could even be subject to engagement distance regulations that you would normally find when you are using a sniper rifle. For the most part, this is kind of a non-issue because pistol manufacturers take this fact into account. But, trust me, I have seen some pistols in my day, mostly revolvers, that have pushed 500 feet per second. So, in conclusion, spend your money wisely and take into consideration what you really need out of your pistol in order to make a smart purchase. Now let's talk about different pistol models and brands to consider. What I love about Airsoft is how similar these guns can get to real firearms. And with the Airsoft market now larger than it has ever been before, if you have a favorite pistol in mind that you say saw from your favorite movie or video game, odds are it will be available for you in airsoft form. Now when it comes to pistols, there really isn't one model of pistol that I would really recommend to you above all the other kinds that are out there. Uh, this is mainly because I kind of consider pistols more akin to a good set of shoes. Now hear me out. 
With shoes, you want to find the one set that fits you the best and fulfills all your needs. The same concept actually applies to purchasing a pistol. For example, this is a Sig Sauer P226. It's very large, it's very authoritative, it's full metal, so it's actually going to be very durable, and it has a whole bunch of different uh, features and buttons on the side of it that you can use. However, if I am left-handed, I'm going to have a problem getting to all the different controls and features on this gun because this, was, this pistol was clearly designed to be used by a right-handed user. As you can see, all the controls are on the left side of the gun where I can access them with my right thumb. But if I transition to my left hand, look at my left thumb, there's nothing over there. So I'm gonna have to wrap my thumb all the way back around to this side in order to actuate any of those controls. And quite frankly, that's just not convenient and very uncomfortable. Now take a look at this Smith & Wesson m and 9. It has a polymer lower receiver, so it is actually very lightweight, but won't be as durable as the 226. It actually has interchangeable back straps right here that you can take off and replace with different sized ones so you can fit it uh, to your sized hand. And if you are a lefty, it actually has ambidextrous controls on it. As you can see, it has a slide release on both the left side of the gun and on the right side of the gun. And it even has a magazine release right here that you can switch over to the other side of the gun. So paying attention to those kinds of details when deciding what you want is something very important. Some of my key tips for things to look for in a pistol would be one, magazine capacity, because no one has ever said, man, I wish I had less rounds. So more rounds that your pistol mag can hold, the better. Number two, does the pistol have a hop-up unit? A hop-up unit is a device in the gun that puts adjustable backspin on your BB when shots are fired from the gun. This backward spin on the BB will actually enhance the range of the pistol with a variety of different BB weights. So this can be a very valuable feature. Number three, pistol size and weight is very important to consider because if you get too large of a pistol, you'll actually have a hard time carrying it around and it'll just ultimately weigh you down and get in the way because it's going to be too big and too cumbersome. Lastly, number four, look to see if the gun has a Picatinny rail on the underside. Odds are you probably won't use this rail all that often, but if you want to mount a, say, light or a laser onto this rail system, you have the option to do so. For example, here we have a little light that just slides over the top of that Picatinny rail, locks into place, and there you go. I now have a light on the underside of my pistol. Pretty convenient. Now with all that covered, let's go over some pistol brands that I would personally recommend to you. These brands include KWA, KJW, ASG, and Elite Force. Now keep in mind, there are a lot of different brands of pistols out there that I did not in fact mention that are still very excellent. However, this is just a list of brands that we've personally used and or have had good experiences with. All right guys, the moment you've all been waiting for. This is my personal opinion on what I think is the best beginner airsoft pistol. And that gun is, drumroll please, the Elite Force 1911 TAC. Now, all I can say about these little guns is that they are just tanks. I mean, they just run. In fact, they are so reliable, we actually did a reliability test, or more like a torture test, in fact, on one of these guns just to see how well it would hold up. And it actually did pretty well. I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below if you are interested in checking it out. What makes these guns so reliable is, well, for one, they have a full metal construction. So even if you drop the gun on concrete whilst in a full sprint, which I've done by the way, <laughs> it wasn't a good time. We don't talk about that. You can then just pick up the gun, dust it off, and what do you know, it's still good to go. In addition to that, the gun is CO2 powered, so you can get a ton of mags off of it with just one cartridge. And let me tell you one other thing, this gun has some really hard recoil to it. Not that it won't actually throw off your shot or make the gun flip or anything like that, but the recoil, the felt kick in your hand, it feels really cool and it's really, really fun to shoot. Speaking of magazines, this one comes with one in the box and it holds 14 rounds. Some other cool things about these guns is they come in different colors, such as, well, this gray one that I have here in my hand, and they also have a tan and black one as well. In addition to that, Elite Force even makes an all black World War II style 1911A1, which also looks extremely legit. 
The gun also features a built-in Picatinny rail, so you can mount whatever lights and lasers you so desire onto the end of your pistol. In addition to that, it actually even has an adjustable hop-up unit inside as well. And as I previously mentioned, that's a very important thing to have in your pistol if you're using kind of different BB weights, or you want to get the maximum range and accuracy out of your pistol. So, what can I say? I really love these things. And actually, as a matter of fact, our whole team does as well, because most of our guys, including myself, still use this gun as our primary sidearm when we go to Milsim events. And lastly, these things only cost around $120. Now that is a little bit more expensive than some of the other GBBs out on the market today, but considering what you get from this gun in terms of reliability and all of its other features, you won't have to worry about the gun ever malfunctioning when you need it the most, and if you're anything like me, you'll probably just end up completely being satisfied with this thing and be perfectly happy with it as your sidearm. And if that price point is still just a little bit too much for you, you can always look at the A1 model, which mechanically is the exact same gun, but it has a few different aesthetic features to it, and it only costs around $100. So, in conclusion, when the chips are all down, and you've gotten to a really bad point where you need your sidearm to go bang more than anything, I'd personally recommend going with the Elite Force 1911 TAC version. Alright guys, well, that'll about wrap it up for this episode. I hope you all found it useful, and if you guys have any questions or concerns regarding purchasing your very first airsoft pistol, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. And to our more advanced airsoft players watching this video, feel free to chime in, help give advice, or even give pistol suggestions to some of our newer airsoft players. We're all a part of this community together, so the more we do to help each other out and get involved in the sport, the better. Anyways guys, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to shoot that like button, it really does help us out. And subscribe to the channel to get the latest updates from us when new videos go live. We'll see you next time. Alright guys, I'm out of ammo. My saw is down. Remember me! Give me covering fire! Will you remember me? I will remember right, you. Here we go! Go buddy! Ah! Go get them! Hit! Ah!